In this lesson, we will learn how to predict the products for a chemical reaction. To predict the products for a chemical reaction, you first must classify the reaction. If you're uncertain how to classify reactions, please review my lesson on that topic. But as a brief review, there are five common types of reactions. Double replacement, single replacement, synthesis, decomposition, and combustion. We'll take a look at one of each of these examples. In our first example, we see that we have the reactant silver nitrate and barium chloride. We have two compounds as reactants. Think about what reaction type that might be. Sort of looks like a double replacement reaction. If you remember, in a double replacement reaction, we have two couples dancing on the dance floor, so to speak. Those couples decide to switch partners. For simplicity's sake, we are going to let the cations be the boys in the couple, and we're going to let the anions be the girls in the couple. So silver, the boy, is dancing with nitrate, the girl. Likewise, barium, the boy from the second couple, is dancing with the girl, chloride. When they switch partners, silver will now be dancing with chloride. Barium will now be dancing with nitrate. Boys, generally speaking, lead the dance. So when we write the two new couples, the boy, the cation, will come first. It really doesn't matter which order we write those couples in, as long as within the couples, the boys come first. Now let's take a look at balancing this. Silver nitrate would be AgNO3. Writing the formula for barium chloride, we would get BaCl2. I strongly recommend that when you write the formulas for the products that you cover up the reactants. By covering up the reactants, you will be less tempted to simply transpose the subscripts that you have on the left-hand side to the right-hand side, and you'll be more likely to do correct formula writing. So on the right-hand side, we want to write the formula for silver chloride. That would be AgCl. And then for barium nitrate, it would be BaNO3 in parentheses with a 2 outside the parentheses. Now it's time to balance, so we will uncover the left-hand side. To balance this reaction, we need a 2 in front of the silver nitrate and a 2 in front of the silver chloride. Our reaction is now balanced. Moving on to example 2. In this particular reaction, we have magnesium and we have copper 1 nitrate. What kind of reaction do you think this might be? You have a single element, again magnesium, and then you have a compound copper 1 nitrate. Sort of looks like a single replacement. Before you write the products for the single replacement reaction, however, you must refer to an activity series. If you recall, in an activity series, any atom that is, any element that is above another element in the activity series will replace that element in a single replacement reaction. In other words, referring to the activity series, magnesium is found above copper. Therefore, magnesium will replace copper. If you use the analogy of a high school dance, copper is dancing with nitrate. Magnesium, the individual, walks over and says, excuse me, may I cut in? So magnesium will now be dancing with nitrate and copper will be alone. When we go to write the equation for this reaction, magnesium in its elemental form does not have an ion charge. So we would simply write down Mg. Copper 1 nitrate is written CuNO3. Again, let's cover up the reactants as we proceed to write the products. Magnesium nitrate and copper. 
Again, copper is in its elemental form, so it has no ion charge on the right-hand side. Let's uncover and balance. To balance this reaction, we would need a 2 in front of the copper nitrate and a 2 in front of the copper. Example number 3, aluminum plus oxygen. Once again, can you classify this reaction based solely on the reactants? I have two individual elements. Probably looks like a synth synthesis reaction. My product would be aluminum oxide. Writing my reactants, aluminum, again in its elemental form, has no ion charge. And then oxygen being a diatomic element would be written as O2. Cover up those reactants to write the formula for the product. Aluminum oxide is Al2O3. Let's uncover those reactants and balance it. I need a 3 in front of the oxygen to give 6 oxygens on the left and a 2 in front of the aluminum oxide to give 6 oxygens on the right. And then a 4 on the left in front of aluminum to balance the aluminums. Moving on to example four. In this case, I have mercury two oxide, and I am told that it is heated. With only one reactant, this must be a decomposition reaction. Mercury two oxide will break down into the elements mercury and oxygen. Whenever you see a form of energy that's given to you in the reaction, that's a hint to you that it's a decomposition reaction in most instances. Decomposition reactions require some form of energy to occur. In this case, heating will cause this decomposition. When we write the equation for the reaction, mercury oxide is HGO. If you'd like to, you can illustrate the fact that heat was added by placing a little triangle on top of the arrow. On the right hand side, mercury, Hg, and oxygen, again, being a diatomic element, O2. Let's uncover the reactants and balance. I need a 2 in front of the mercury oxide on the left and a 2 in front of the mercury on the right. Moving on to our last example. I'm reacting propane with oxygen being that I have a hydrocarbon as a reactant along with oxygen, pretty obvious I think that it's a combustion reaction. If you recall, the products of any combustion reaction when you're combusting a hydrocarbon are carbon dioxide and water. Propane plus oxygen, O2, would give me CO2 and H2O. To balance it, I will place a 3 on the right-hand side in front of carbon dioxide. That gives me 3 carbons on each side. I'll balance the hydrogens next with a 4 in front of water on the right. That gives me 8 hydrogens. Now look at the right-hand side. Count the number of oxygens that you have present in both carbon dioxide and water. I have 6 oxygens present for the carbon dioxide, 4 oxygens present in the water, that's 10 oxygens total. I need a 5 on the left-hand side to balance this reaction. 